One neighboring country that shares a 300-mile border with Ukraine is Poland. More than 2 million Ukrainian refugees have sought safe haven in Poland over just the past three-plus weeks. Poland is also providing military assistance to Ukraine. And so how does this frontline country feel about the war next door? For that, we turn to Mark Margovowski. He is Poland's ambassador to the United States. Ambassador Margovowski, welcome to the news hour. Good afternoon. President Biden is going to Brussels this week. He's then going to your country, to Poland. What do you hope will come out of those meetings? I'm expecting a reassertion of our steadfast ironclad alliance in terms of our political relations, but also in the military field. We have always been very, uh, uh, um, very close to each other. I believe that within NATO, it's very hard to find two countries which would be cooperating so uh, closely, especially in recent weeks. So I believe that both presidents, President Biden and President Duda, will uh, reconfirm this uh, ironclad alliance which uh, has existed between our countries for so many years. But, but what does that alliance mean right now? In particular, we know your government is providing support uh, to the Ukrainian military. Weapons are flowing from Poland uh, into Ukraine. At what point does your government worry? What do you, do you worry that it's good to be helping your neighbor, but you don't want to provoke Vladimir Putin to come after Poland? You know, uh, we have been right about uh, contemporary Russia and Putin's intentions all along and nobody listened. Now we are fully vindicated alongside our neighbors from the Baltic countries, Romania, the Czech Republic, Slovakia, and many others on the eastern flank who have always been warning about, uh, against uh, Russia's growing aggressiveness and uh, near imperial ambitions. Now we can see in plain view those barbaric acts uh, uh, of terrorism actually in Ukraine. By the way, a few, uh, a few days ago, a new institution was established in Poland named after Rat Rafał Lemkin, a famous Polish lawyer and diplomat who coined the term genocide. And that institution is now gathering evidence of war crimes committed by Russian troops in Ukraine. So how much can your government, how much more can your government possibly do for Ukraine and not provoke Vladimir Putin? Or how much of a concern is This is a very important point because we have to be very cautious. And I can uh, only echo the words of, for example, NATO Secretary General uh, and many other Western political leaders who are warning against a uh, um, hypothetical potential escalation in, um, in light of, of the Russian aggression against Ukraine. We should keep delivering uh, state-of-the-art weaponry to Ukraine. Uh, the American administration is now talking about uh, transferring uh, long-range uh, defense systems to Ukraine, which is a very good sign and a very positive development. Uh, Poland is assisting uh, also, um, Ukraine in this humanitarian crisis, although Poland is now, our reaction was really exceptional, and that outpouring of solidarity and sympathy towards uh, Ukrainians was really uh, remarkable. But Poland is filling up. Uh, so we are now, many mayors of Polish cities are now in talks with their counterparts in Europe about the possibility of relocation of those uh, refugees. But we are doing our utmost. We are doing uh, what we really can uh, to ease up the tension and to uh, provide humanitarian assistance to all those, as you rightly noted, more than two million refugees who have already arrived in Poland. And I want to ask you about that, but I also want to ask you about your prime minister has proposed a NATO peacekeeping mission of some nature uh, into Ukraine, but we also know that, that NATO pledged back in the late 1990s and 1997 that it would not base permanent troops uh, in Eastern Europe. So are you advocating for NATO to change that policy? Yes, you are talking about Russian NATO founding act, which has already been violated by Russia not by NATO. And of course, we can uh, argue about the definition of the substantial uh, troops on, on the territory of the so-called new uh, NATO member states. I would like to stress very clearly, we are not new NATO member states. We are just NATO member states. And according to the Article 5 of the Washington Treaty, we are obliged, both Poland and the Czech Republic and Germany and uh, France and Spain and all the other member states of this alliance to defend each other. So uh, if we see that aggression on the part of one of our neighbor, neighbors, because Russia is uh, one of Poland's neighbors, we have to be prepared for 
uh, an escalation for every plausible scenario. Just quickly, do you have any more information about the nature of any peacekeeping force? It is an, an, a preliminary concept, a very inchoate idea, not even a plan, an idea. And I believe that uh, it could be one of the topics that uh, uh, the European leaders and NATO leaders will discuss during the upcoming summit in Brussels. Something else I quickly want to ask you about, and that is the reporting uh, that everyone knew just a few days ago. Uh, Poland was prepared to send Soviet-era MiGs uh, to uh, U.S. NATO base in Germany uh, that would then be uh, transferred yes. to Ukraine. The U.S. Yeah. vetoed that. Why didn't Poland bring that up first with the United States before announcing it? We, ca we came up with a very specific proposal because we were under immense pressure also on the part of the American public opinion. But you have to remember one thing. This is one-third of our arsenal of combat aircraft. And uh, we could not just deplete this arsenal unilaterally and voluntarily, especially in this uh, troubling situation. But why, why? Is that deal completely dead now? Uh, the, the American administration has rejected this proposal. I think we can move on and now do everything we can do uh, in order to uh, keep delivering weapons to Ukraine and to help the Ukrainians defend themselves against this uh, uh, unprovoked invasion. Well, everybody wants to know how that's, how that's going to happen. But just quickly to the important subject of refugees, your country, as we said, has taken in more than 2 million Ukrainians. How long can Poland sustain this? I think uh, it requires a common effort to resettle, to relocate those refugees uh, across Europe. We are willing and ready to absorb even more waves of refugees. By the way, there was fertile ground uh, for the absorption of Ukrainian immigrants because before the war we had roughly 1.5 million Ukrainian migrants who lived and worked in Poland, and they were integrating into the Polish society smoothly. And I believe this is uh, what is happening right now. Of course, we would like them to return to their homes as they would like to return to their homeland after the war. But, and, and your country expects, you can, you can sustain this for as long as you need to. It's hard, need it's hard to predict. Of course, we expect more migrants and our country is ready to absorb them, to admit them. Also in Polish homes, because as you know, uh, so far there have, has been no refugee camps in Poland. Almost an overwhelming majority of those families who fled Ukraine have been hosted by Polish families in their homes. It, it's been a remarkable scene. One other thing, Mr. Ambassador, I want to ask you about. You mentioned a moment ago that Poland's been on the front line of, of Eastern Europe in standing up to Russia. However, it's also known that your government for, in recent years, seemed to be wanting to stay on good working terms with, with Vladimir Putin, was opposing uh, many elements of European unity. Does this war in Ukraine change that? Can, can Poland ever do business as usual it has, again it has with changed. Russia? It, it has not changed our attitude towards Russia, but I believe it has changed the attitude of many other Western countries, uh, like Germany, like France, uh, like Italy, towards Russia. I don't think there is a, a, a shred of a possibility of returning to business as usual with Russia after this war. Mr. Ambassador uh, Marek Margagovsky, thank you very much for being with Thanks us. Thanks a lot. We appreciate it.